Here we go, episode 8 of the Hibs Ramble, the Grant Brebner Derby, as we're going to call it this week. Joining me once again is the man, the myth, the Carrick now heavy himself, he's now moved out to the sticks, Liam McLennan. Liam, how are you mate? Very well, Mr Leach, how is yourself? I am good, I'm good. I do think we should let people know that at present, Michael can't commit to... Because you may be wondering why it's just me and Liam now. Uh, Michael is, ironically enough, doing a course in podcasting, which requires a bit more of his time than what he's able to give us for the ramble. Yeah, so he's still very much a part of the team, but he's not going to be with us as often as what any of us would like. But there's no, no departures... Nothing like that. He's just as as everybody who does these podcasts know, we're just fans. We just like to we like to talk shit in our spare time. And unfortunately, it does Michael's, take it does take a lot of time as well. Yeah. And Michael's they not got enough spare time. time so. to, and the fact that he hates pies, as he said. So yeah, exactly. So I mean, there's no use on the pie review, is he? Yep, exactly. But anyway, we're here to uh, give a little review. Sorry, a fucking review. A little preview. Of this Saturday's fixture away at Tannadice Park against one half of the Dundee Unity. That'll be Dundee United. Bit of a difficult one to call this one because they've had they've probably had the most up and down start to a season as you could expect. They obviously yeah. had the ex- extreme high of beating Alkmaar at Tannadice, which to be fair was a cracking result. It was a great result. Coupled with the with the away leg which was just a complete and utter fucking capitulation the keeper forgot his hands seemingly for that game and then they got scalped cabbage rests yeah they got scalped at Tynecastle, and then they suffered what was quite quite honestly an embarrassing result against Celtic and they got pumped off St Mirren at home. Oh, sorry. So they did 3 0 against St Mirren. So I, they've no, I think their goal difference after, what, five games is something like minus, minus. 14, 16, something like that. I'll tell you exactly what it is. I've got a table right here. Obviously ca- caused um, Jack minus. Ross. Minus 16. 16, yeah. They need to be making inroads into that. But there was. Obviously caused Jack Ross to lose his job. I know there's a bit of mixed. I don't know if mixed emotions the right word, but there's uh there's contrasting views about Jack Cross from his from his time at Hibs. He I mean didn't want to really go over all ground, but as anyone who's been a part of the club we wish him the best. But I think it might be a might be a wee bit uh, a bit time for Jack to, to sit out and sit this out and get himself a gig alongside Dean Crichton on open all mics on a Saturday. <laughs> but then no one will be able to see his lovely clobber. Put him on the, the results show with Dougie Vipon then. That'll do. Or whoever the Daryl Curry, that's the guy. Put him on our version of Soccer Saturday that only starts yeah. at quarter past four. Ridiculous. But um, aye, to be fair, I mean Dundee United have been on a absolute downward spiral since they beat Alkmaar, so Craig, that only means one thing, doesn't it? Yeah. It only means three points against Ibs on Saturday. Surely. Yeah, it's one of those it's one of those like can did you hurt yourself at work, you know? Are you in a dire need of three points? <laughs> can't see where your next victory is coming from. You should call Hibernian. Or it's almost like the Bruce's Price is Right. Yeah. You th- come, here's what you could win. Three points. Shoot up the table. Make a dent in your goal difference. Who's it going to be, Hibernian FC? Come on down. <laughs> say, to be fair, though, our record at Tana Dice last season was no bad. With uh, Very good, aye. the game in the cup and in that weird COVID reduced game on Boxing it, Day. Boxing Day. Yeah. Aye, so it's I don't I mean I don't know how we'll be looking squad wise. I believe McCurdy's still available. Oh, I'm and not too sure. I think someone I said think it was Ross County and Aberdeen Ross that he was in Aberdeen. For. Yeah. Yeah, obviously the long term absentees, Bashiri's still out, McGinnis still out, Nisbet's still out. Although At time of recording, anyway. Yeah. I don't know, is there a chance that McGuinness is maybe closer than what they're letting on? I think we spoke about this the other week, didn't we? Um, last Friday, that he might be a little bit closer, but him not being in the scores on, on Saturday kind of tells, doesn't it? You never know, though. 
Like, yeah, I suppose. I mean, I would hope. I would hope that he's in. Oh, uh, that he's fit. At the time of recording, there's been no update. Yeah. Um, as to whether he will be fit or not. But it would be good to have him as an option. I think. No, and it would be just nice to see him back in a squad. I suppose. But anyway, that's we could be talking about something that's never ever going to happen for a for a wee while yet. So, yeah. I mean, Dundee United, on the face of it, strengthened quite well in the summer. They got Dylan Levitt back on a permanent, which seemed to be pretty good business, although paying about 300 grand for him and only getting a two-year deal was a bit strange, I thought, because after a year he's pretty much, you know, powers in his uh, powers in his pocket. The card, no, yeah. his, what, would you, what would you say? Powers, the powers in his hands. Yeah. The what? power is in your hands. Can take me power in, the, power in the pocket. Jesus Adam McGuinness. I am having an absolute Robbie Fowler with these like acronyms <laughs> and weird sort of well these caveats. Ah, uh, you know, the, um, I need to get rid of the caveats. I think that's. I need to get that's rid what of the problem is. Uh, they brought in Stephen Fletcher as well, who we were kind of maybe hoping to see back at Easter Road. Jamie McGrath, they brought him in. Jamie McGrath as well. They got him on loan. Glenn Middleton permanently. Yep. He seems to, you know, another one of these boys that plays everywhere in Scotland, and yet when he's on loan at Hibs, he does absolute jack shit. Yeah, he was shite at Hibs, wasn't he? Yeah. I think I think the problem for Dundee United, as well as um, leaking goals for like it's going out of fashion, I don't think they really know what their best eleven is, which is a uh, positive for us because when you're getting beat three nil, seven nil, nine nil, four one, and so on and so forth, you're not going to be picking the same players week in week out, are you? So there's not really going to be a sense of squad cohesion I no. know that they won against uh, Livingston in the cup um, midweek last week but then they drew 0-0 against Motherwell at the weekend they were only 0-0 in the league mm-hmm. so it's maybe back to the drawing board for Liam Fox in terms of his squad selection for Saturday which might benefit us a little bit to be honest yep no you're right it's it's one of these things that you it kind of looks shite on the players, though, given the results they had before. And then literally two days after they sat across, they're able to knock Levy out of the cup. Mm-hmm. And then get a respectable That's, draw. Right was, Motherwell, who started, who started quite well under Stevie Hamill as well. It was at Levy as well. Yeah. Not a, not an easy place to go and win. No, no the only... So, I, su- I suppose, looking at it from our perspective, having watched, especially watched them against St Mirren, when Curtis Mean gave Charlie Mulgrew the run around. I definitely think there's they're still going to be fragile, they're still going to be vulnerable. I think if mm-hmm. we can get at them early doors and do what we've done on Saturday or get an early goal, it could very well turn out to be a decent afternoon. It could, it could be the doing that we've been talking about. But yeah. then I think I said that last week and said about Kilmarnock, it could be yeah. the doing that we're talking about. To be fair, the only thing that didn't reflect that being a doom was the scoreline, because in, in all intents and purposes, it, it, it was. To quote Michael, it was a 1-0 by scoreline only. Yep, exactly. Exactly. I mean... I think it could be a potential banana skin for Hibs, though. <laughs> Going up there, you know, they're kind of on the new manager bounce a little bit still. 1-1, drawn 1. Don't know. It could be. It could be a bit of a banana skin. I mean, I think everyone's expecting Hibs to go up there and blow them away. Like, but you can't really be sure because, like you said, they have strengthened on paper really very yeah. well with the players that they've signed. No, they have, and it's it's one of those things that we need to be. Do you know what I mean you need to you need to you need to be on it for the first whistle. You need to. I mean, at the time of recording, Dundee United have not got a permanent manager. It's still Liam Fox. It's in and caretaker charge and you just you just want to think that Johnson will pick a side that will look to prey on those defensive fragilities that Dundee United have got because there's no there's no doubt and you know there's no question about it they are fragile as hell at the minute and it could very well be the game you know for Yuan to get off the score sheet McCurdy as well you know, the, their defence isn't the great, isn't the quickest, isn't the most mobile. And we've got three forwards who are, you know, on the eye quick and then also deceptively quick as well. Yeah. We just, we need to be, 
we need to play a lot, 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 lot faster than what we did on Saturday. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a, it's a difficult one because you you know that it's it's a tough place to go. It's a it's a tight stadium. That will probably be quite busy there. The United fans tend to come out in their numbers, um, especially for teams uh, games against big teams like Hibs. Um, but I think it's a, a good chance for us to show the fans where we're at because yep. I think it's starting to click. We spoke about that on um, the last pod, talking about Kilmarnock. Mm-hmm. And I think I said that we're nearly there. I feel like we're nearly there. Yep. This this could um, it's a real real good chance for them to go out and and really take apart a, an established Premiership team, a, a team that's got a lot of good players in it. And I think it would be a real statement of intent if we went there and pumped them. Yeah. I would love to go there and pump them as well. Fuck them. No, I agree. There is, I mean, there's so many different ways in you know the context of looking at it that you want to get. I suppose the first thing when you're away from home is that you avoid defeat. Yeah. Like as long as you avoid defeat, that's the main thing. But then when you factor in the opposition, how poor they've been, how fragile they are defensively. Given the array of attack and talent that we've got, there's no reason why we can't expect to go up there and win and win comfortably. We just need to, like I said, move the ball quicker, and also be a hell of a lot more clinical when the chances present themselves. You know, sure. we've got. Would you make any? Would you make any changes from Saturday's lineup? Uh, uh, depending on what system they want to play, I would. I'd be inclined to give McCurdy a start for Henderson. And go with a front three. Go with a front three. Yeah, I would. I would like to see McCurdy through the middle with Ellie Yuan coming in off the left, or even Boyle coming in off the left and Yuan coming in off the right. Um, I yeah. just think the the one thing that Yuan needs to start doing is just as we said before, release the ball quicker. Just those, just a split second quicker, really. Yeah, those two three touches that he takes extra, you know, allow the like we said, allow the opposition to get back between ball and goal. It makes it harder to harder to score. So I do think if we can work on work on releasing the ball that touch quicker. Um, yeah, and, and I don't think it's a case. Seen, I, I don't mean, think I, it's a case of. To be fair, I say that after he scored, after Boyle scored against Hearts, and after Boyle scored against Rangers, that I was watching it and I was like, right, release it, release it, release it. Especially the Rangers one, he seemed to take about five, six, seven touches, and I mean it turned out to be the right thing. But you can't do that every time. You yeah. need to mix it up a bit. You need to try and, you know, even at my level with the boys that that I help coach, you know, we're we're trying and still into them one, two touches release. Mm-hmm. You know, try and move the ball as quickly as you can. Because you can't run at full pelt with the ball all the time. And if you're slowing down and walking and taking an extra touch, all you're doing is allowing the opposition to get back into a settled position again. Yeah. No, I completely agree. I don't think it's a lack of ability for Eli Yuan because oh, he's, clearly got, he's clearly got the feet. He's got good feet for a big man. Yeah, uh, I think if anyone from down the slope is listening, that's one for for big Liam of down the slope. He loves his cliches. Um, definitely got good feet for a big man, and it's it's not as if the ball gets away from him and it's he needs to take a touch to get it back under again. He can, he's got the chances to then release the ball, but it's maybe that he just doesn't look up quick enough. Yeah, which. I just- uh, He's not, I don't think he's he's shown the necessary attributes to be an out and out goal scorer. Which But he's definitely I think his best position and we've said this is off the left. Off the left. But the, it is a bit worrying that we've now got you know, Boyle, Ewan, Milkerson, Bojang, McCurdy. You wouldn't class any of them as you know, solid out and out goal scorers. No. Maybe in this bit. When he's back. Yeah. Well, so I mean, I I I met him a bit because he's no fit, um, and he's recovering from injury. But aye, well, we go. Will we do predictions. What are you thinking? I think. I think I said it last week. I think this will be the game where it clicks. Actually, no. I said last week I went. Oh, I think we'll win like four one. But 
it'll be a game where you go, oh, it was never a 4-1 game. But I think we'll win 4-0, and it will be a 4-0 game. I think it'll be 4 going on 44. At the weekend, absolutely nothing to come back and bite me in the arse here. 4-0 Hibs. <laughs> McCurdy, Boyle with two, and Noan Kenny will score for a corner. Direct for a corner. He'll take it and it'll like go Douglas, in. Like Douglas Ruiz has been doing for Aston Villa. Yeah. I'll I'll go a bit more conservative. I'll go 2 now. I think we're looking really solid defensively just now. That's another you know, another home clean sheet, which is yep. always good. To actually say another home clean sheet is the first home clean sheet of the season. Exactly. Yeah. It's but, another clean sheet. Yeah, because obviously we got it away at McDermott Park at the start. So I two 0 and hope to see. Actually, you know what? I hope McCurdy doesn't score. Only because because you won't be there to see the silly. Yeah, I'm going to be an. We armadier. still don't have we still don't have a name for the celebration. Yep. I'm so going to do. Where are you going to be? I'm going to be an Armadale. An Armadale. Oh, next to next to Dave, actually Dave for the old Hibs talk. My chappy's door. No, Alfie's oh, uh, Alfie's team are down at Hibs. It's our first. Well, it's going up to eleven aside. It's our first foray into the Scottish Cup. Oh, well, good luck to Alfie and the Dino. Been drawn away at Armadale Thistle, so I uh, weird. These games are like ten o'clock on a Sunday morning. For some reason, it's a Saturday afternoon. No idea why. Weird, yeah. very weird. But well, we wrap up with just a couple of questions. Let's go in. So we've got one here from our good pal Cal Laidlaw. Are we getting the style of play Johnson promised over the summer? If not, is this down to needing to settle to settle or the qualities of the players that we have? I think we're getting close to it, like you've already Easy. said. The the volume of chat, like I said, we, we created the volume of chances we did uh, not yesterday on Saturday, with as little, you know, with the play being quite ponderous. I do think we're having someone like McGuinness back. It'll it'll take it. I think that that will be the catalyst to take it to that proper next level yeah, for me. I agree, and it's a great segue. It's a great segue actually, because Kevin yeah. Wilson's asked, "Is McGuinness the missing link?" I think yes. him being in midfield unlocks our ability to play the way Johnson wants. And I think the only reason that we've not went for a a creative midfielder in the window is because maybe we know that McGuinness will be back sooner rather than later. Yep. And I think he I think he definitely does provide that missing link. He is he is what people were expecting Henderson to be, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe so. And I just think it goes to show that, that Kev knows ball. Kev does know ball. So, oh, Kev, knowledge. if you're listening, big thumbs up for you, mate. Yep. And finally, to wrap up the questions, we've got one from our very own Liam's dad. My dad. Big Colin. He yeah. says... We leave the dweebs questions till the end. Yeah, he says, out of Boyle Melkerson, which is spelt with S-O-N, which is a disgrace... <laughs> Yuan, McCurdy, Bojang and Nisbet. When fit, who is our best front three? Out of respect for the English Dictionary and Elias's own name, I refuse to answer that <laughs> question until it can be spelt properly and appropriately. Uh, no, I think, I think Nisbet will be first choice when he's fit again. Johnson spoke a lot about it. When he took the job that Nisbet was somebody that he's A, tried to get before and B, really, really likes. So I think he'll be the... He's the out-and-out centre-forward. And then it's Boyle and then any one of Yuan Melkerson, McCurdy. I mean, with the World Cup break, the, the games after the new year are got to be thick and fast. So we're going to be playing every three, four days, yeah. probably until the end of the season. So, well, if any a football manager taught me anything, that definitely will be. Yeah. I think it's it's actually a very very good question, and I think well um, my dad's also missed out. Um, oh fuck, what's his name, Craig? What's his name? Kukarevich. He's missed out yeah. Kukarevich as well. <laughs> I seen the cogs turn. The cogs were turning my brain. There, fucking what is this yeah. guy's name? Um, I think it's a like I think we've mentioned it before. It's a very very good problem to have. Um. And I think a lot of them will see rotation in the squad. 
people seem to love Yuan, but I thought Melkerson played very, very well off the left and off the right in pre-season. So I'd be inclined to even say Melkerson ahead of Yuan. But if I had to pick three, it would be, at this moment in time, Boyle, Nisbet, Yuan. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. So that yeah, us? that wraps up the questions. Excellent. Well, That's thanks, us, Colin. A very, very quick spelling, one. Please. I know, for fuck's this, sake, this, man. This type this. of... You're lucky you're one of the co-host dads because, well... We wouldn't I, even look twice at the question. Chances is a, chances of us getting questions from Adar are slim and none. So, <laughs> you're the only main Hibs, da, hibs Ramble da, So. Uh, oh, I'm a Hibs Ramble da. So are you. Well, so am I. The Hibs Ramble da's Daz. Aye. Daz. Hibs Ramble Granda. Aye. Too many da's. Yeah, anyway. Too many uh, that'll that'll wrap up the the preview of the Grant Brebner Derby. Again, thanks for getting in touch with your questions and that. We really, really do appreciate it. We're still trying to work out a good schedule. We're not really quite sure how it how it works in terms of putting episodes out. So if you are listening and you do like it, please, you know, if if it's on YouTube or whatever or Apple or Spotify, rate the podcast. Give us a like if you can. Let us know really... what kind of schedule works, what yes. what times you like to listen to your podcast because we've we've kind of come in blind a little bit to the podcast game. But we've so, not. We've, well, we've not really, we've but not. like we've kind of we've kind of come in blind in terms of like setting schedules and stuff. So yeah. we came in late. Um, like it was it was something that happened just right at the start of the season, pretty much. Um, and we're just trying to figure out the best way going forward so if you like the reviews more than the previews if you'd rather not have the previews let us know if there's any I mean we'll have we've not done it since the Hearts game but I think over the next couple of weeks we'll definitely do a six of the best segment because yep. we, we didn't want to oversaturate and do it too much but we still want to do it enough that it gets you know that it's, it actually means something that's not just something chucked in but obviously we've got away yeah. games coming thick and fast so there'll be plenty of premiership stuff so I whatever you like, just get in touch and let us know. Yeah. Bye. That that that's that's it. Well, thanks again for listening. Thanks for uh, chatting with me for twenty five minutes, Craig. No, mate. I, uh, do you know what? There is not one person on this earth that I would rather sit and chat shit about Hibs to than you. That's actually so, that's high please. Do you know what? I appreciate that, mate. So don't thank me for coming on. Thank you for having us on, for us to be <laughs> on. <laughs> nah, like, if you can, like I said, if you can give us a follow uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. At the Hub Ramble, leave us a like, get in touch, and we'll see you after the Dundee United game for episode nine. I know, amazing. Thanks everyone for listening. Cheers. Yeah.